Hello everyone, good morning. How is everyone? I'm undecided if you watched that intro twice or if I just missed a cue and it started late. I looked up and saw like, it's at the part at the beginning again. Um, so hello, uh, good morning. We are here with our um, our little uh, special drinks. Uh, Claudia, you have a mug, I believe. Yes, we are in yes. style. We're in style <laughs> here um, in our sunglasses because Claudia, what are we doing today? So today we're going to be creating a branding for a boozy ice cream. So we're going to be transporting yes. ourselves around summer, summer vibes. So have a little fun. cheeky cocktail. So I have mine on a mug because I like my cocktail field. But soon we're going to transfer our booze in some ice cream. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yeah, sorry. I literally just hit my mic. So I'm sorry to everyone who is listening <laughs> that heard that. Um, let me know about the audio, if everything sounds good between us. If you have any thoughts about that, let me know. We'll fix it. Um, and it's going to be a fun, fun time. Like we said, um, I am Andrew Hawkrattle. Hello. I didn't introduce myself. Um, I'm Andrew Hawkrattle. Um, you can find me online at just hawk.co, and that's H-O-C-H. -H. Um, it's German, so H-O-C-H-D-O-T-C-O, -H -O, or just go to the actual hawk.co. Um, Claudia, who are you? <laughs> introduce yourself. <laughs> Um, I'm still working on understanding who I am, but yes, I know, right? <laughs> to keep it brief, <laughs> yes, it's a long journey. So first of all, hi everyone in the chat, it's so much fun to see all of you and Andrew, and we are like all in the same square, because usually I'm in the chat when I look at you, Andrew. That's true. Um, so, yes. So I'm, uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm an Italian designer based in Manchester, UK, where I run my design practice called Studio Print My Soul. And I work for um, small, medium and big businesses, building brands and developing uh, websites. Sweet. So probably a lot of you know me already. I can see Pia, Michelle, Vuduva, Laura. I saw so many amazing people in the chat. They're our friend, Yasunari. Thank you so much for sticking out yesterday. Sorry, no, um, earlier on it was, um, I was watching a Sue stream and Yasunari told me that it's 9 p.m. Oh my goodness, I that's in awesome. France. Yeah, it's fun <laughs> to see the convergence of people that I see in your streams and then people that I always see in my streams that like everyone's Yay! just here together. Yay, friends. Um, cool, all right. I am going to put on my regular glasses because I can't see my screens very well. Oh I my goodness. Up to you so guys. Right. What should I do? My goodness. Yeah, it was so nice. As you can see, I've got like a light right here in the middle, a yes. light on the side. Yes. What should, um, I do? should I should I go back to normal? All right. I mean, you do you. We're we're vibing today, and like we said, we're working on a project to make some branding for a boozy ice cream, and this will be a head-to-head -head duel, a battle of the ages. We'll be working off the same creative brief, but going two completely different directions over the next two days. It's going to be so much fun, and I'm so excited. Yeah. Um, yes, and if you are just tuning in, right before this was our friend um, Julia. She was doing the daily creative challenges, which are so much fun. Um, I see a couple of you joined me last week for that, which is very awesome. Um, I'm going to hop over here into my browser real quick and let you guys see. You can go to behance.net slash... Oh, I, I hit my mic. I'm do I did it again. <laughs> I'm so sorry, everyone. Behance.net slash illustrator, sl sorry, slash challenge slash illustrator. Um, they'll be dropping that link into chat. Um, and so you can go there, get involved, and check out all these challenges. Um, and Claudia, my favorite part of any stream is when we get to tell people where to go to get involved. And that's our Discord. So you can go Discord right up here and point to the floating link above our heads. Do, 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 a bitly that's dot, our community. Yes, bit.ly slash AI Discord at this beautiful link floating above us in the ether. Um, that's where we are. So go check it that out. Um, and we'll be looking at that at the end of the stream to give some feedback on the daily creative challenges that Julia is doing. Um, also, also, um, we have another thing that Adobe is doing that's great for the community. And that is they have invested one million dollars um, into the creative community. And you can go uh, find out about the community fund, um, apply for a funded project or an Adobe commission. Um, so you can go and check that out. I'm sure Ahmad will drop a link in chat. Um, it's a way that Adobe is investing back into our creative community, which is really, really cool. So 
All right, Claudia, I'm going to send over to you. Um, and today for chat, you'll be seeing my screen and Claudia's screen at the same time. I may be going back and forth. So if you're looking and you're like, there's so much going on, my screen will be floating above my head <laughs> right here. Yep. And Claudia, above your head is your screen. Um, so it'll be floating just like this, everyone, um, for today. So Claudia, do you want to take it away and tell people a little bit um, about what we're working on today? Yes. So first of all, I wanted to suggest that if you keep eating the microphone, we can use it as a gong. I think it's like, you know, perfect for a competition. That's so true. So I think it, it sounded like a gong and I absolutely loved it. And it's themed for the competition. Because, I need to get yes. a gong. Like I need to get a real yeah. gong. Well, trust me, it works just fine. Just keep eating the microphone. It's fine. Yes. <laughs> it sounds perfect. It does the job. Yes. So as uh, we were saying, the reason why they will fit absolutely the team is because we will be challenging each other today uh during this stream while we create uh this alcoholic ice cream uh brand and um just before we dive in into the brand creation i prepared a little bit of a blog about uh what is positioning for those of you who never worked and let me know in the chat i can see um steve um by the way andrew i don't know if you have kept um, I kept up with my chat, but when uh, me and Steve are, are online at the same time, on behance, we do learn uh, Adobe Creative Cloud and Italian. It's actually developed oh a fantastic gosh, Italian so skills. <laughs> we need to get you on the same <laughs> trend there. I can see also Steven, Eva, um, Anna, Malik, so many amazing people, and Carol, so great, Andrew, to be able to hang out with them and with you at the same time. I know, right? Um, so, people are saying my mic's low, so let me know if this is better. I've turned up the volume, ramped it up to 11, so let me know if this is better um, for everybody. Uh, yes, and it is cool to see the chats coming together. Um, yes, we love some good chat competition. Uh, Steven is usually in my chats. Um, that's so fun, Italian. Um, I love yes. that. So we we should gonna... do some little bit, a little bit of Italian here, like today, at some point. Okay. Like we'll just switch over. Okay, 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 I won't okay. say anything. We'll do, we'll do a little. Yes. We'll do. We'll do a little once we get in the mood. I'm yes. gonna help Perfect. it for for the mood. Yeah. So yeah, so, let's talk about the brand. Um, talk about positioning and uh, kind yes, of what we're doing. Yes. Yes. Do and and I'm gonna keep my uh, sunglasses until I introduce the sort of uh, nice. positioning that I'm going for because they're part of my brand personality, and. Um, I feel very weird. We were talking just a moment ago that we are both used to control the scene, but I believe you all are seeing my screen right now. Yes, yes, your screen is live. Fantastic. It's very weird that I'm kind of controlling and pushing things through as you do. I'm other chilling it's crazy. today. So I like, know. I'm just here um, taking care of my inflatable swan. So <laughs> that's my duty. I had my today. inflatable <laughs> planets here that I could have pulled out. I do have. Uh, my space helmet Ready from our last phone. stream. We, we both just got weird stuff from our streams. Yes, That's how it works. We love it. We love it. Okay, so me and the Inflatable Swan are ready to transport you into this amazing new brand, which is, again, um, an alcoholic ice cream. So boozy ice cream. I've put out this um, little kind of slide or information informational um, greet. So me and Andrew can decide where to position ourselves and we can take the occasion of having um, this fantastic opportunity of developing two different brands, sorry, two different version of the same brands, which I think is fantastic to see our crazy brain at work. Yes. And um, the idea of having the positioning, so what is positioning? And to say it very briefly, positioning is the picture that you draw in your customers or potential customers mind when they think about the brand, the product or the service. So when they're going to think about these um, boozy ice cream, what they're going to think about and your mind is going to be a healthy, fresh, juicy, cool poolside sort of product. What about yours? So mine is going to be um very punk rock it's gonna be like Ooh. marketed to the college crowd that just wants to party so it's gonna be very what? like boozy very cheeky super like uh edgy kind of not afraid to take on the like hangover of the next day um it's gonna be that kind of brand um and yes okay. tunk you're asking about the tiny hands they're still here they're still tiny hands on my desk <laughs> i always keep little tiny hands on my desk because i think they're fun um, so yes, <laughs> they so are here. <laughs> so something that I wanted to specify is that when you create this perceptual map to position um, your product, it is absolutely up to you uh, when you do your meeting with your clients, 
in order to understand what sort of direction you're going to take, which sort of um, adjective you're going to use. And that's where the brand personality come into place. So brand personality is called like so because we are trying to give our brand a lot of adjectives and features that are um, of experiences of, of person as well. So human feelings like serious, warm, happy, and you can completely use uh, the chart as you please. The only must do or must have is that the polar opposite, so your um, Y axis, I guess, and it has to be top and bottom. So north and south have to be, of course, opposite uh, features yep. of the same um, feeling. So happy, sad. And then the same for the other axis. So you can kind of navigate. So at the moment, I just put healthy, sugary, fun and edgy. Um, do you want to change anything? No, do that, you want to implement anything good. else? Where do you want to position yourself? I, I think maybe, Ooh. yeah, I would want to put like boozy in there and I'd probably go okay. like, like far right, um, like middle way down, like super far right toward edgy. And then like about yeah. halfway down between sugary, um, and healthy. So just, 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 just below, just below yeah. the middle line. So slightly more sugary. Exactly. Slightly, yes. yep. slightly more syrupy. Yeah, exactly. Should slightly like more syrupy. syrupy. <laughs> yes. More, um, I, yeah, might, I might end up going lower than that, but that's probably a zone that I'm going to try for. <laughs> so we're going to put like fresh fruit. And as you can see, like you can be absolutely customizable and I'm probably going to make this available for you later on, Ooh, fun. which it brings me to a thought. So sugary and Boozy. Syrupy. How do you spell syrupy? Can we put boozy down syrupy. there? Syrupy. Boozy. Yeah. I apologize for the uh, spelling. As you may know, my friends on the chat, uh, Andrew, you better watch out. I make up words all the time. I have this Italian English and Italian English coming up. So I can see Giovanna in the chat as well. She works with me at Studio Pro My Soul. She's a, an amazing freelance designer, Italian also based in Manchester. Thank you so much for joining, Joe. And I can see Eve, Pia, so nice. So oh, Claudia, people. it looks like we're captioning your OBS window instead of oh. your Illustrator. If you just want to hop over to Illustrator, I think um, that will just pull it up full screen. Maybe? Let's see. Hmm. Let's see what happens. Oh, yeah. Pia, a little pink. I'm coming up, so you uh -oh. better get this party started. Andrew, tech, tech, tech question. There is yes. any chance that you can cut my screen? Oh, absolutely. I'll cut go? back to our Please. beautiful faces, just talking, and we'll try some. Um, no, no, not our faces, to cut my screen uh, to just the Illustrator, because I am streaming my screen um, on OBS. Oh. So let's see if I can do it. Let's see if I can, perhaps. Do you need to stream your screen on OBS? No, no, wait, wait a second, wait a second. Full screen interface. Uh, probably should be able to have a full screen preview. Yes, as you probably know. Oh, let's see. Oh, 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 I'm going to solve this. I'm going to solve this. Welcome to the second. party. This is this is my favorite part because this is oh. how you know that it's live. Oh, there oh. we go. We did it. I've All done right. it. And I'm cutting it. back. Wow. Look at look at the beauty and professionalism here on this stream. <laughs> this is the only time you're going to get that. Problem get solving. Real boozy here. <laughs> Thankfully, I didn't have any drink yet. <laughs> yes, and to, yes, my, one of my favorite quotes, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same, totally unique, completely not ever been done before. It's a Lady Gaga quote, and I think that sums up what's happening here today. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, so I think we're ready to go. Thank you so much for letting me know that my screen wasn't showing. I think it's, it's all good right now. I think we're good. Um, as you probably, I would like to share you, uh, if you all of you have seen my my creative space, I posted it lately on my Instagram. I have about one, two, three, four, five different screens. Uh, so sometimes I don't even know which mouse to use. I'm just yep. gonna, you know, share it. In. It's a little crazy, <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right, and so I think that really develops, you know, what a, what a creativity is. I always say creativity is not to invent new things out of the blue, but it's about how to solve problems yes um which i think we both do in very different ways which will be fun yes. um, so where are you going on this chart so i'm going definitely fruity okay uh, oops i distorted my name so i'm definitely going like fruity and maybe a little bit more on the fun side rather than on the edgy so i'm going to be a little bit more classical okay very you know i'm gonna have like fruit shapes and like classical summer color but really really focus on you know that fresh crisp fruit Cool. coming there so 
yeah, it looks like they were like, we're, we're almost, um, as you can see, uh, how do you say it? Like a specular? little bit opposites. Yeah. We're on that yeah. like weird diagonal. <laughs> yes, yes. We got our diagonal. So that's going to be our little um, starter. And then we'll see when we're going to create our brand, if we position it right there, if it makes sense, if we actually followed our guidelines. And um, I'm just gonna jump. I don't know if you want to introduce yours or you yeah. Gonna let's start yeah. I'll I'll going, hop cause... into the split screen between the two of us, um, yeah. and then I can kind of talk about where I'm going, and then you can pick it up from there. So, what I'm doing sure. is I will be working um, on a edgy kind of brand um, that is boozy ice cream. I'm going after the college crowd um that is like is kind of just gonna have this at a party like the goal with my brand is like to like drink it's not like the like summer fun whatever it's like no no, no this is like a party thing um so mine's gonna be very edgy a lot of like strong type texture um i'm gonna play with like some collage stuff um and uh yes and so the name of my brand as we um, move in, and this will give you some ideas for the positioning, the name for my ice cream, my boozy ice cream will be Sauced. Um, so Sauced will be the name of my uh, boozy ice cream. It's got that perfect double play of like a chocolate sauce and then also being totally sauced um, as an expression for um, having too much to drink. So we're gonna play with the name Sauced today um, as the edgy brand. And Claudia, what are you doing for yours? So I wanna still not unveil mine. I just wanna oh, perhaps run fun. through my mood boards. Oh yeah, and you have I'm mood gonna... boards. Wow, okay, yeah. here we go. Well, no, 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 I haven't done mood boards. All I've done is okay. created some brand value because we're gonna create the mood boards. Do you think that this was gonna be just an Illustrator stream? Forget about that. We're gonna go for InDesign, Illustrator, Photoshop. We're gonna do Same. the Same, I'll be everywhere. Thing. And I've created a few files also for all of you. If you know me, you know that I like to gift, gift, gift. So if you head on my website, uh, which is iamclady.com, I should have it open. Of course, it is not open, but it's iamclady.com slash resources. You can find two different downloadables here. So we have one that is a very first one called Logo Development Stage One, which we're going to approach in a second once we uh, are going to start to develop our logo. And the second one that I'm going to be using right now is my mood boards, which I used a few streams ago. So uh, if you followed my streams before, you probably already have that. It's exactly the same. I've not updated yet. Um, so if you scroll, scroll down, you're going to see the little InDesign. Here it is, and it says mood board in design template volume two. Great. So that's the one that I'm using right now. If you want to follow along, feel free to use that, but make sure that you download the um, branding one over here, the logo, logo development, so we can work together. You can have the same assets, but let's jump Fun. into the actual vibe. And I'm going to keep my sunglasses like another minute while I took. Yes, present I'm actually going to put on my 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 face powder. I have like makeup that I keep on my desk and my head is so shiny. So you are your glasses. <laughs> I'm going to try to mat down my Perfect. head and you keep That's going. That's fine. That's fine. So um, one, what I want to introduce here before I unveil the name, just to get you a little bit more into the same vibe of this uh, uh, poolside sunset little happy hour ice cream, is um, that our brand is going to be warm, fun, a fun experience, vibrant, cool, and of course, juicy. Those of, me, those of you who know me already, uh, Juicy is also my writer name for when I do my little painting on the walls. But of course, it's going to be the warmth of the summer. I'm just going to read here what I wrote about 10 minutes ago because I don't remember it. <laughs> so a fun experience. So summer vibration all around, feet are splashing in the water, mouth full of laugh, music is playing, a sound of happiness. And also I was really working, when I was thinking about the brand, I was really working in my mind, my mind, my, my gear were working towards this idea of cool and warm because, you know, his ice cream is cold, but outside is warm. Interesting. So how do I translate this feeling? And that's where the brand name come, came out to me. And I'm going to be called it Chills. Ooh, and fun. because he's boozy, he's going to be tipsy chills. <laughs> yes. Do we like it? Let us know in the chat what you think of our name because the competition starts now. Yes, it's fun. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so do we want to cut to double screen and go for it? Do you have more to walk through? Yeah, of course. All right, cool. Um, 
I'm just gonna start to uh, load some images in order to then collect colors. So really the work is starting. Sweet, so I, um, if you follow along, have a very um, different approach. So I very much like to work conceptually. So I will often do my mood boards after I have a direction <laughs> and I'll go back and do sketches after I've already got on something. I like to jump right in and kind of brain dump to see what comes out and then find images to inspire that as I go. So you'll see me on my screen literally just going crazy with different type, kind of tossing stuff around, chasing ideas um, kind of as I go. That sounds fantastic. Um, so uh, while I'm using here, there's um, this little template that I provided. I'll probably just uh, be nice to tell you how to use it. So as you can see, we have a lot of frames, which all you have to do is uh, collect your files. At the moment, I have already, um, let, let's let's create a new, a new um, folder for this project. So I'm here on the CC libraries in InDesign. And to create a new one, make sure to click on the down point here down pointy, down pointing arrow. See, first word of the day, down pointy arrow, <laughs> where it says create new library. And I'm gonna call this one Tipsy Chills. So I can start to collect images um, that reflect the sort of mood um, that we're gonna go for. And uh, see if we can search some um, stuff here. So we have one result from my library. So it looks like already have like, I've got like a little blue pool. And all you have to do is to simply click and drag into the frame that I provided in order to start to create um, this, our lovely mood board. And the reason why I do that is because I just start to like bring in the visuals. So I start to feel myself into the um, environment. So where the product is going to be used, as I say, it's going to be like a pool side. So I really want to start to understand visually what sort of color my potential customers are going to have in terms of um, this, you know, sunset uh, pool. So I'm going to start to bring in some in images, uh, put it into my library and then into my mood board. And then we can use the color from that. So that's uh, my step for now. Sweet. And um, um, yeah. so I today am trying to use um, some of my fonts. Um, which you can check out at hawk.shop. I have resources as well, um, wow. just hawk.shop. And um, I'm using some of my fonts today because I think they could be interesting. Um, I'm also gonna be exploring um, some of the Adobe fonts. Um, there are some syncing issues happening today, so I may stay in my zone with some of my fonts. We may incorporate some others, but um, on the left here, I've just started to incorporate the keywords of the emotions that I want. Um, and then on the right, I start playing with type and I always have the type be like punchy things that I could see the brand saying, right? And so instead of like, you know, like have a drink, it's always like drink me, or it's gonna be like, you know, like lick this because it's ice cream or something. So it's Ooh. gonna be like edgy and like kind of in your face. So I play with different type to find the right typeface, but also the attitude in the actual copy. Fantastic. Um, so what I've done here, I was on my um, Adobe stock and I click on save to library, but it went into a different library than the one I created, but not a problem right from InDesign. Uh, all I have to do is find the library that it was uh, selected while I was browsing. And then by right clicking, I can click on move to and then find my new tipsy chills library and move all the photo back into my library so we can keep organized and keep everything together well it looks like that no more um of the Im those images here so i can go back and select my right library so i've got this little umbrella here andrew are you planning to use the full um illustrator photoshop uh, superpowers. I am. I am. I'm gonna do some Illustrator um, first, and then I'm going to be doing uh, jumping over into Photoshop to do some kind of mock-ups and some more like uh, editorial kind of stuff. Sounds fantastic. So as you can see, I'm using um, a lot of Adobe stock images, and in this case, all I'm doing is saving the preview to my library because I'm using it as a reference. So unless you're going to be using those for uh, your personal, sorry, your your personal project or your client's project, um, you don't have to uh, license it only if it's for inspiration. So all I'm doing really is downloading the preview to have a look at it, to again, transport myself into these uh, south of Italy uh, beach vibes. I don't nice. know I don't know if you knew, um, Andrew, but I'm from the south of Italy. That's why I'm like pushing my, I be there my so roots. Bad. 
<laughs> can't wait as well yes are, are you like a total like beach like you love to just go to the beach when it's like sunny and like basking in the rays my parents live on a boat oh nice can go more i'm a little fish yep i'm not i'm not much of like a sand person i like boat private island trips and you know just nature 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 sometimes uh, we travel uh, my dad despite his age is a, a very still hippie wild person uh, loving these little like you know swim at six in the morning it just yes. goes and have his you know um, and um, sometimes when we when I'm hanging out with them um, they just you know if, the, if there is a good weather because part of being hippie they say it, of course the 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 seaside the side so if the wind is good we're gonna go if the wind no plants the nature drive the plants uh so sometimes i found myself like uh, with a big full moon and a nice uh like no wave a very flat sea and my dad was just like okay let's go we're gonna go to greece today or we're gonna go to oh my goodness. just real so, quick just swing on over to greece it's a couple hours for us from from where I'm from, and uh, we're just gonna end up like sleeping in the middle of nowhere. And our friends' goats come and drink. Did you know that the goat cheese is salty because the goats drink from the sea? Oh, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Did you know that flamingos are pink because they eat shrimp? <gasps> no, I didn't know that. Yes. Oh my gosh, we're sharing so much I know. with them. I know it's like design knowledge <laughs> and just life things. Um, yeah. So I can see Malik asking, I need these illustrator shirts. So I don't know where you can get it. I have a gift. Probably, I know that there is a, an Adobe merchandise shop, uh, but this one was, let me see if I can do the little, sorry, Ender, I'm just going to take the problem. audio off a second. But oops, yep. I don't know if you can see it. But oh, fun. it says um, Adobe Latin America. So I had it gifted during an event last year in Guadalajara called Talent Land um and uh, that's where i got the t-shirt i don't know where you can get it malik but it's worth to check out the um it's worth to check out the the merchandising adobe merchandising shop which i think is uh, based in san jose do you have a clue andrew i don't yeah. know actually i have no idea where it is i guess that it would be in there um i think it's in san jose i don't know um, so I'm starting on my screen to uh, uh, nail down some typefaces that I like. Um, two of these are mine. So the top one that says Drink Me is mine. Um, it is called uh, Delector, named after one of my friends. And then the one that is Full Meltdown is one that I have in my shop as well called Calamity. And it's a combination Ooh. of just wood type. Um, so I don't know if I want to go wood type zone. I want to go something that is kind of textury like that. Oh, actually, I have another font. And I'm not just plugging my fonts. I actually am just wanting to use them. So I have this font called Industrious. And I think that uh, I might use that. So I'm, again, trying to pull like fun things. And when I'm thinking of taglines and getting like the emotions in, I'm trying to think of things yeah. that overlap between them. Like you yeah. would drink a milkshake and drink a drink. You would like scream at a party and you would scream for ice cream. Um, Ooh, a full fun. meltdown. So you're having like a meltdown where like you've had too much to drink, but then also your ice cream is melting. Salt sprinkled is like, that would be like salt around the rim or something like that. Um, but I want to play with like the oh idea of, right? Like putting like salt on the rim, but then like it's like sprinkles, I think is fun. Yeah, um, that's super cool. That's yeah. super fun. And by the way, like as soon as we uh, finish the stream, I'm going to order a massive ice cream yes. I'm so, uh, and a margarita at the same time. I know, right? <laughs> So if you are an ice cream producer, you better start pr producing one of our products because they're both pretty awesome and people are going to order it. So let's see, I completely lost. Uh, we're, we're chatting and chatting, but I can see the chat moving as well. Oh, yes. Just people make sure are... that there is any question. Oh, Pietro from Lecce, woo -woo, which is my hometown, of course. That's what I'm like. <laughs> is the city of the sun and the wind and the sea oh that's where i can learn we can learn some italian and actually i'm gonna make it this even a little bit more uh, fun which is uh i'm not gonna teach you only italian i'm gonna teach you southern italian dialect from my area so it's like very unique um so uh, we say that my city is the city of the sun the sea and the wind because yeah, i'm from the Lecce, which is exactly the very tip of the hill uh, of Italy. So in Italian, you will say sole for sun, okay. mare 
for um, uh, for the sea and vento for the wind, but we're twisting it into my dialect, which is going to be Lusule, Lumare, e Luyento. Lusule, Learo, Liento? Lumare, Mare. Lumare? E Luyento. E Luyento. Yes. I love it. <laughs> Yay! I speak Italian. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you speak um, uh, Italian from Lecce. Yes. So while you're diving right into the typeface, I'm still populating um, my my mood boards. I think that you know uh, I don't want to stay behind here in the challenge, so I think I'm gonna just jump jump right in with stuff that I uh, that I enjoy here because I can already see some of this content. And yeah, by the way, um, if you are gonna use my uh, mockup here, don't worry about you know you don't have to fill in all the gaps that I've created. That's completely up to you. Um, of course, if I was working for a client, I'll be, you know, creating bespoke page here. I'm working to compete uh, with Andrew. So I really have to, you know, keep it fast and just try to focus on getting the brand delivered. <laughs> so um, I'm going to move a little bit more faster than I would um, usually. So, you know, feel free to use the pages to you to delete pages that you don't want. Um, and, um, another little, uh, two actually, uh, quick trick that I'm going to show you is that of course, where you can say your logo here, you can change that from your masters. Um, so here it is. And there is a way in which you can make sure that that logo will always be on top of everything. So if, for example, we have the logo over here, but in this case, we have an image. We want to make sure that 100% of the time, our logo is always going to sit on top of the image. All you have to do is to go into your windows and layers and create a layer called master. So when we go into our master, I mean, you don't have to name it master. You can even put it like my logo on top, whatever you want. Uh, but uh, all you have to do is to make sure that when you uh, bring your logo in, let's see if I can bring my print my soul logo from my desktop see how organized i am today Let's see if i can find that studio cover yeah i think i found it i can't believe it i actually found it <laughs> real quick <laughs> so uh, again in order to place an object in indesign press command d and then select it from wherever you have it and it looks like this your logo is huge um so i'm just gonna resize it here and I'm going to place it instead of where it says logo here, because that's just a placeholder that shows you that you can put your name, your logo, your company, whatever you want, just up here on the corner. Uh, that's just, of course, a suggestion. You don't have to um, use the same space, but just make sure uh, having it in you, to your um, master will allow you to uh, be consistent. So I'm just going to make sure that it's there and make sure that it sits into my top layer. So when I go back into my photo, my logo is going to be on top of everything. And for whatever reason, if I bring my layer down, um, you can see that it disappears. So that's a cool trick. And a second cool trick is that I've downloaded a little video. So when I was thinking about fruit, as I said, mine is going to be a really fresh, fruity, healthy, um, is to uh, create like perhaps a pattern with some like fruit. So while I was looking through Adobe stock, I found this little video and I put it into my mood board. And I don't know if you ever use this feature, Andrew, but if you do import video, all you have to do is like, again, download it to your um, credit uh, library, CC library, just as I've done before directly uh, from uh, Adobe stock or by searching here into credit library, search libraries and Adobe stock. Once you bring it in and you save uh, your PDF with command E to export it, making sure that you save as a interactive PDF, look what happens. I'm just gonna use that as a test. So I just wanna make sure um, this is page number nine where I do have my little video and I'm gonna click on export and I'm just gonna press okay. Let's look what happened here. Yes, let's bring it screen as well so it Ooh. tells me click to activate so if the magic works i'm sorry see, what see. are you doing yes, yeah. oh, oh I, need, I, need, I need i need to i need to allow i need to allow the 3d movement so make sure that if you are on a, a acrobat you um trust this document here and um let's see if we can and do it again somebody I'm just in chat say, said that oh. they think your dad is here is guido your father <laughs> yes he's here <laughs> 
Oh, it's Hi, so Dad. Fun. <laughs> Job it's so about. fun hanging out in chat. Hi, Dad. Yes, my parents uh, are learning um, the Creative Cloud during those times of um, lockdown. So let's see if we can do it again. And we have our pattern moving. So we have our little moving That's PDF so cool. from InDesign. We have an animation. I'm, I'm overly excited about that, but I'm loving animation lately. And the fact that we can even use interactive, um, you know, little templates on uh, our InDesign and boom, PDF. Imagine your clients, you know, they're used to oh, boring PDF yes. with images. You send them one that is like, oh, click here. And once you click, you got like Ta -da, your little animation. That's so fun. Hope you guys love it. And by the way, stay tuned because tomorrow we're going to create something similar in Photoshop. I'm already giving away to the competition. Ooh, all my <laughs> secrets. <laughs> all my secrets. Yeah. Uh, and so. yeah, we'll be back again uh, tomorrow, everyone. Um, if you want to join us, same place, same time. Um, looking forward today, we have Peter Del Tondo, my good friend, um, after this for the XD challenges. Then we have Cal T. Webster coming up. And after that, I'll be back again. Um, I'm in like a fighting mood. And so we're doing the duel today with Cloudy. And right after that, um, a little later today at I believe three, I am doing the design off with Voodoo Val. Um, we're doing a Street Fighter edition. Um, I may or may Ooh. not come dressed as Chun-Li. Um, so you may get to see me in like the full get up, which would be fun. Um, so come back and check that out at three o'clock. That sounds so fun. Yes, yeah, Steve Festus Costaboom, one of my favorite names. He's always in my chat and I just love his name. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh my gosh, this photo needs more space. So I don't I'm... know if you can see my my little kitty vibe here. Oh, oh, I so got a little cute. kitty hanging out on the pool. Um, I'm playing around with mine with some fun taglines. I had the idea of like, what is something that you say about ice cream that you might also say about um, about uh, drinks? And so I think this is a really fun tagline is pretty, pretty pleased with an olive on top. Um, it just is like the perfect like cherry on top, but then it's like, oh, it's an olive because it's ice cream stuff. So I'm gonna play around oh, yeah. with this. And this is my process. I love to just chase ideas. And I'm like, wait a minute, weren't you working on like a logo? And I'm like, yeah, but this is more fun. <laughs> yes, of course. And I mean, fun is always the best ingredient for any recipe. Yes. I believe. Um, so as you can see here, I'm also searching um, new images directly from InDesign. I'm still in my CC libraries. Uh, I go here where there is this little search bar. I'm just going to zoom in so you can see it. And just make sure that you select Adobe Stock. And uh, in this case, I put cocktails, but I can put happy hour. And, um, you know, we have all these different colors here coming up. Perhaps probably I'm gonna put like sunset because that's more the sort of vibe that I'm sunset happy hour. Let's see if Adobe Stock like my complex research. Yes, those are the color. And once you have your um, images there, so for example, this beautiful gradient here, all you have to do is to click and drag and just place it into the provided frames. And here it is in your InDesign document. As I said, I'm going a little bit, is, you know, they're looking a little bit messy at the moment, but it doesn't matter because all we're looking at the moment is to find color. So you're starting from like concept and and um, typefaces and I'm starting more from colors. Yes, sorry, I just had a really fun idea. Somebody in chat said, um, I'll have another. And I was like, oh my gosh, what if what if the tag was make it a double? Because you can have a double shot, uh, but then also a double scoop, right? So fun. That's ah. amazing. That's so fun. Okay, let's see what else. I'm just going to go back. When I usually get lost and I don't know what to um, look for for my research, I always go back to my company core values slash culture, which is yes. the very basics. And that's why I call them a brand platform. They are the foundation. We're always going to come back to our to our positioning, to the information vibes, feeling that we want to um, share. So again, I've done a lot of vibrant, cool. Oh, perhaps healthy. That's what I can search. Juicy. I'm just going to search juicy. Oh, fun. Oh, if I can spell it. Of course, I spell it with an H, which I don't think is the appropriate spelling. Okay, speaking <laughs> speaking of um, like things that are like juicy and tasty, it just reminded me of the Fergie song. Um, I actually got mad about this the other day. I was listening to the Fergie song 
we're it's like T to the A to the S T E Y go you tasty. Mm-hmm. And I'm listening to it and I'm like, wait a minute, that's not even how you spell tasty. <laughs> tasty is T A S T Y and it's like T to the A to the S T E Y and I'm like, how did we all collectively let her get away with that? Like Well, I will never even notice I, I, I wouldn't I mean like, the song's been out for like twenty years or something and I just now I'm like, wait a minute, hold on here. Because it's all about the rhythm. It is. It's, it's all true. About the you have you tossing an extra letter and nobody notices. <laughs> I do it all the time. Trust me. <laughs> That's why I kind of say it ahead that I make up new words because it yep. does happen more often than not. Um, so I'm just gonna pool party. That can also be something that I can be interested in. Pool so I'm party. I'm trying to look and uh, play around with fonts that I like. Oh, maybe it will. Maybe it's an italic thing. That's kind of fun. So I'm really just playing around with like, it, does any of these? So when, uh, much like Claudia's doing with the core brand values, for me, um, I try to mentally uh, put whoever the person is that would be like the Jared of Subway, right? Who is like the Jared of this that like is the spokesperson, right? Or like the flow from Progressive. Like, you know how Flo speaks, how she communicates, what the tone is. So I try to figure out, like, okay, who is that person? And in my brain, it's, like, this dude who, like, is a frat boy that's, like, kind of funny, but, like, is the cool guy that, like, wants to throw the party, have everybody over. And so as I read through these, I try to think, okay, does this type, when I read it in my head, is it his voice? Like, does it say the right voice? Um, And so I am making all these taglines or whatever, trying to figure out what is the right voice that's cool so um i don't know if you guys can see my screen but um all the images are kind of like small and the same size and then you go to the kitty on the pool and it's kind of like blown up to <laughs> it's got the biggest face and that's just because it makes me laugh and i think that fun of course was uh, a part of our brand core and i don't and i don't know if you can see it but it's like he's got your sunglasses by the way the kitty just stole your sunglasses to go oh, in and count true. on a pool. <laughs> that's true. Shame on that cat. There we go. We'll double up. That's so fun. Okay, that's fun. <laughs> oh my gosh. Does he hang out with you? Do you guys hang out together? In the yeah, pool? yeah. It's actually yeah. That's my friend. I don't know how you got a picture um, of oh, him, but yeah. <laughs> you know, I was I was just hanging out with a drone. Yes. I'm actually Around I'm actually just out of that picture in the same outfit, same thing. I'm just floating next to the cat. Yes. <laughs> I just, I just cut you off, you yeah, know? <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm just going to show how do I pick my color. So once I start to bring in, and again, like, uh, as you can see, if you scroll down the mood board, there is plenty much more to fill in. So patterns, shades, of course, competition, and then we're going to get, I'm going to get to typography in a second. But the reason why I'm going to focus to color is because I'm going to show you how to use this fantastic mood board and select color. So in the past, what I would have done is uh, use perhaps this layer that I already have prepared. And if you're using my template, you will already have it there where you can uh, use these little circles here. And by pressing I on your keyboard, you just go and select a color. So with our eyedropper, we go and select a color um, from our um, mood board, of course. So, you know, you can get the pink, you can get whatever color you want um, there. And then, of course, you can delete the layer and then you get left with the swatches just like that. But now I have another amazing way of operating. So first of all, let's say this is the um, kind of page that to me looks like is the closer to where I want to go with the brand. It's got like the warmth, it's got the cool, it's got the fun. So it's really representative of my brand and this sits on page five. So I'm going to add and click on Command E to export it. In this case, I can just export it as a JPEG put it on my desktop and call it uh, color palette, color palette. And, ooh, I can't spell color palette. I don't know how palette <laughs> spelled. I just, I'm just like colors. I spell it palette. <laughs> <laughs> Tonk, nice to see you, man. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, Steve, grazie, grazie, so much Italian. But now I wanna, I wanna hear you saying it or writing it or Searching and Google it, Lusule, Lumare, Luyentu. Forza Lecce. <laughs> yeah, Mons, if you could drop that in chat for us, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> 
Also, I can see Alberto. What's up? Did anyone say party? Yes. <laughs> Yes, we are having a party all day. All day. And Andrew is going to have a party until the end of the day That's with true. Voodoo and Val, which is also in the chat. Yes, Hi, and Val. after Voodoo Val, I'll be going live on my personal Behance, which I'm sure you can follow by going to the info tab. Um, we might be Ooh. in there. I'll be going live on my personal um, channel if you want to follow there um, to do some more branding work later tonight for an actual client that I'm working on. Um, I've been Amazing. doing. Oh, so you're doing live work? Yeah. So sleep? I've been doing um, all of my Great, streams man. so far have been a start to finish branding project um, with an actual client. We like did a critique of my pitch to them, which was super fun. Um, but yeah, it's oh, been wow. it's been fun. It's really good. Um, I mean, I know that we're doing everything from scratch here, but it would be nice to you know work for a client. Like, you're brave. I don't know if I would have been so brave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like. Don't look over here. Like, look over there. <laughs> yep, it's crazy because like they'll pop into chat and they're like, "Hey, what's going on over here?" And I'm like, "It's totally a dumpster fire." Thanks for tuning in on your project. And they'll be like, "Cool." And so it's cool to have them like able to hop in and watch. That's so fun. By the way, my mom is in the house as well. Hey, what's Ciao, up? Ciao, Julie. <laughs> we got the full family on. We're just missing Frida the cat, and then we're done. <laughs> All of us. <laughs> Um, so let's go back to whatever I was doing because I was lost listening to you, Andrew. So what I've done, I have saved on my desktop our color palette, which was page number five collection of Adobe stock images that I use as an example to bring together the warm, cool, fun experience that I want to uh, represent with my brand. And then what I'm going to do is to simply drag this little JPEG in Photoshop. And what's going to happen is that Photoshop is going to open um, with this layer, one single layer, which is going to be my photo. And I'm going to unlock the layer and always on my libraries, making sure that I go into the libraries that I created, which is tipsy chills here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on this little plus button. I'm just going to zoom in because I know that we got only half of my screen. So we just want to make sure that you can click on add content and create from image. And it looks what happened here. So what's going to happen in a second is that Photoshop is going to open the capture service, which is our lovely Adobe capture app integrated yes. into our amazing Photoshop in order to pull out our color themes for our brand. Boom! that already looks so nice. What do you think? Yes. I love, I, I love that. So anything. I, I, so when I am um, doing color palettes for clients, I like to look at Google map views of house colors in the area and then sample color palettes from the common house colors in the area. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. So it's like familiar that's to really people, cool. but they don't know why. Oh, right? oh, that's so clever. Yes. That's so clever. See, I'm learning so much here. So I'm probably just going to go thinking also, you know, of the fruit. And that's the reason why I really like this image because it was having, you know, a little booze and a little bit of sunset and a little bit of fresh water and pool. So I definitely want to stick with this, um, you know, kind of water green. I'm just going to try to find and look how cool it is. When you look for these color themes, you really, really can go. you got like a, our little zoo. So it allows you to see exactly what sort of you are you going to be picking here. That's so cool. I love it so much. So I'm going to get like a little bit of this flower summary color. See if I can get the right hue that I want. Simply clicking oh something a little bit more like vibrant because we said that we have a vibrant brand. And again, if you ever are in doubt, go back to your brand guidelines to make sure um, that everything is on brand. And then we got a little bit of this mango color. What else? What else? So we got the cool. We got the vibra vibe, we got the strawberries. And I'm also start, like, you know, thinking in terms of uh, fruit and what sort of um, flavor we're going to have, you know? So definitely strawberries, mango, pineapple. Yeah, so probably like a little bit more of a yellowish and an orangish. Do you do a lot of ish, ish colors? I do, <laughs> I do. The and then like eventually hone it in. Um, and I'm actually doing that right now. I'm, so I'm working with this font. So I think I found the font that I want to be my logo type. Um, it's a font that I made called Templeton. Um, and I look forward to see your your type. I didn't know that you had a type spaces. I'm oh, just yeah. going to be a user now. Man of man of many talents here and there. I, I do Amazing. I dabble. So I do mostly display stuff because I like having a lot of character. So I created this font called Templeton. 
Um, and I made it so that like it was bad. Like I wanted it to be super bold and like graphic, but like wonky and weird. I based it on, yeah. have you ever seen Charlotte's Web? No. Okay. So in Charlotte's Web, there's this character and he's a rat and he is like kind of the villain, like kind of like the, the guy that like has this, like, I don't know, kind of comes around and eventually ends up being nice or whatever. But he goes and like gets like all these different treats from like a circus and is just like eating all this stuff off the ground. And I was like, what if that was a font? Uh, which is a weird question for a creative to ask. Um, but I tried to create a font and then I named it Templeton um, after him. And so I think I'm going to use it because it has like a really rough, weird edge on it. And then each of the letters. So I made it so that the uppercase and lowercase are like tilted at different angles. So like Ooh, if you have awesome. like a double E, you can do one lowercase, one uppercase, and they'll be oh, at different so angles. Fun. Because I hate you, when fonts console. have this, like, I hate when fonts are, like, textured or weird. And then you have repeat letters and they look the same. That it's, like, you can kind of make it and make it wonky and weird in different ways. I'm absolutely sold. I'm definitely going to go gonna go and, and have a look afterwards. Um, Sorry, I was just having a look at the chat because it looks like for some reason my chat is being, like, stuck to, I don't know, like, in the past. <laughs> I'm stuck in the past. I need to, like, bring up to um speed oh my gosh my mom mom stop speaking in english <laughs> but don't speak also in italian so um i just a little disclaimer for all of you in the chat my parents don't speak english so uh adobe life feel free to ban them again <laughs> if you need to because i don't know what they're saying you know like you get to a point where usually you're afraid of what your kids do and then it gets to a point in life where you're afraid of what your parents do <laughs> That's true. i'm at that yes. stage right now <laughs> yes I'm like, well, uh, yes, <laughs> cough. <laughs> right, so once I created my palette and the color that I want, and again, like, I, I suggest never, never uh, be too emotional about your color palette. This is always a guidelines. It's a great starting point, but then stay flexible and just click and make sure that I selected my tipsy chills and click on save to CC libraries and boom. We're gonna have our color ready to go. As you can see, they're already loaded into the CC library and I'm gonna jump now into Illustrator where you can find the mood board logo development template. For those of you um, that have um, just tuned in or tuned in not at the entrance, um, you can download the templates that I'm gonna be using here for the logo creation, logo development on my website. I'm just gonna jump in real quick so it's iamclady.com slash resources. Woodoval probably can help us with a quick link. And um, as you can see, there is the very first resource is logo development stage one, and you'll be able to access these uh, um, illustrator file that I'm gonna be working on. And also uh, not very often, so don't worry, Clady doesn't spam as the website said. Mm -hmm. If you uh, put your email address here, you'll be able to receive some template mockups. Uh, whenever I have time to do some free resources, I'm gonna drop it there and that's it, that's it. I usually say that is a, uh, every month, maybe it's like I should change to every two months. So you're not going to get spam, but sometimes you're just going to have some free resources there. Yes. So feel free to put your email address. I'm not going to spam. I'm barely going to give you some free gift here and there. Um, <laughs> but so, I'm going to start. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, so I'm working with some type playing around with it. Um, to me, when I'm looking at it, it's too textured. I want it to be a little bit clean. So I'm going in and kind of tr cleaning up the edges. So if you see me super zoomed in, I'm just trying to clean up the edges on this. Um, and I'm gonna do two versions to where it's like wonky in two different ways. And like Claudia, you're probably gonna do tomorrow, right? We're gonna do the gifts. I'm gonna make it so that it will like, basically like dance and like kind of wiggle between the two. Yeah, I'm gonna create a sort of um, also like um, advert. I'm probably gonna do like an Instagram advert or something. Nice. Uh, and I'm gonna start to use the, the layers here. So I've got my layout and I wanna make sure that I, I put this uh, little mood board into my work in progress. So I have some of these um, artboard which are already labeled as inspiration. So we've got our little inspiration always present, but most importantly, where it says color palette, I'm not gonna have to go and use the color pick like crazy but make sure to unlock the layer, go to your libraries, select the right libraries, which was our tipsy chills. And by clicking on the little square, all we have to do is select the color from our libraries. I'm so excited about this feature. I love the CC libraries. They're my best friends. Oh yeah, they're fantastic. 
So here they are. And then let's see if I'm missing a color. One, two, three, four, five. I'm missing that yellow. Oh no, I'm missing the orange. Perfect. And then um, what I'll probably do from my mood board, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste my um, values and core. If you can see here into, actually, let's see if we can still use the library. Let's push it. I'm completely trying this out, so I don't know Ooh. if it's gonna work, but I'm gonna go into my uh, tipsy chills. I'm selecting this uh, text to make it easier. I'm probably just gonna click on option and drag to create a copy just for safety. I'm gonna back myself up. And then I'm gonna press shift command O to trace my text and drag it into my libraries and see what happens. See what happens. Uh, and yes, we have about um, 35 minutes or so until our challenge feedback. Um, Already. So I know, right? So go ahead and submit um, your challenge, uh, your challenges on our Discord, um, which Val can drop the link to uh, in there. Go ahead and submit those, and we'll be taking a look, giving some feedback um, and thoughts on your daily creative challenges. Fantastic. And I'm using the so smooth tool over here to just smooth out some of these edges. Um, if you see me just randomly clicking and dragging, that's the smooth tool. Uh, it takes anchor points and kind of makes it so that they um, are a little bit more smooth on some of these edges. Andrew, I just want to make a, an official statement that my new technique invented um, just worked. So what I was going to do, it was going to um, create, um, I'm just going to copy and paste the corporate core. But what I've done, I just make an object so it looks like a graphic, import it into my libraries. And because my CC libraries are super clever, recognize that it's an object. And here it is. Once I jump in Illustrator, click and drag, boom. And I've got my corporate core sitting in the right place here, making sure to remind me what I am doing here. Nice. <laughs> Perfect. So I'm just going to go ahead and now jump into some fonts creation. So first of all, I'm going to go here where it says typography. And when we talk about warm, fun, vibrant, cool, juicy, I definitely think about something um, that has a lot of contrast. So of course, I got two different words, tipsy and chills. So I'm going to look, you know, perhaps to use a script font and a bold font or maybe a thin font and a very big display or a serif and a sun serif. I'm really trying to get that freshy frizz and cools and the warm, soothing, sun-kissed um, sunset. So I'm just going to try to bring both. And that's why you can see where it says typography. I have style one, style two, style three, because that's absolutely depending on the project. You, for example, style one can be all your sun serif um, or bold or serif or whatever you want. So at the moment, all I'm going to do is just call, uh, write down tipsy chills. I'm just going to zoom in. Tipsy chills. And then I'm going to make it definitely bigger so we can all follow along together. I can't believe the time has gone so fast. I'm starting here. Everyone I know it's here. crazy. Uh, when, I, when everyone is going to vote for the brand, it's going to be tomorrow. Um, yeah, we'll do tomorrow and do like an official vote. So make Ooh. sure you come back tomorrow and you can vote on um, which brand you like. Ooh, do we win anything? I don't know. <laughs> like we can, <laughs> we'll win something. We'll win something. So we'll I'm playing with, we'll around with this idea of like this having like sauce on it, like chocolate sauce kind of coming over it. Um, that it's kind of like drippy. Um, I'm not crazy about this idea, but I'm going to try it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to give it a shot. I don't like it already, but I'm going to kind of play with it some more and see if we can get it. We never like our stuff at the beginning. It's true. It's so true. Um, so the way that I work here, uh, when I try to look for fonts, I jump into fonts.adobe.com and I go into browse font and filters. And for example, at the moment, I'm looking for a sun serif. So I make sure that I click on sun serif and heavy weight and nice and wide because, you know, it's the cat. Let me, let me, I need to go back and show the cat. Sorry. Sorry. I have to. It's a must. Look how wide this cut is just like simply flat, relaxed. It gives you the idea that like you're just expanding yourself on the little inflatable on the pool. So we want this like feeling all relaxed and open. And um, that's why we want to transfer. So that's usually what I do to select my font. When I come up with some 
adjective or feelings, I try to transfer that into the characteristic of the font. So in this case, I'm going to go with a large width, a bold weight, so nice and thick. And also I'm just going to make it, you know, um, in terms of excite, which is usually very, very important when we have T or H and my brand has got an H. I just want to make it nice and compact. Again, I don't want any stress. Everything has to be easy, easy to read, easy to drink, easy and enjoyable. So I can already see some fonts that I like. Um, I love these chills. This looks nice. Again, if you go also, you can uh, check into simple text. Uh, sorry, not simple, sample. Just want to make it too simple. Sample text and you can write whatever you want. So um, in this case, I was looking all, only for one word, which is chills, because I want to make sure that again, as I said, I build contrast and I can put those, oops, at least I'm not logged in. Let me refresh that, making sure that I remember this font is called obviously, which I really like. Let's see if it's gonna log me in. I think there were some login stuff happening, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. Fingers crossed, everyone. It's happening, it's yes. happening. We love it. So, you know, I like to take the risk. So obviously semi-bold or I think semi bold is gonna do it for me because it, it then it becomes a little bit too squared but it's obviously bold it just so all i have to do is cl literally click on activate over here where it says activate font and perhaps refresh to see if we can access it let's see let's see um and also you can do that directly from illustrator so you can either do it here uh from uh, fonts at adobe.com uh, go ahead and activate your font, or you can also do it directly here uh, from your character little panel on under properties, or also you can go under window and type character and you can access all your fonts and also the type kit directly here. So if you um, sometimes also browse fonts on Adobe, on a, sorry, Adobe stock on fonts.adobe.com just to get an idea of what I want. And then I can also go through my own um, to see if I have anything that is similar to what I'm looking and is already there. Um, because otherwise I will download the entire font library. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. I'm like, and now I have everything. Yes. So I'm just going to go ahead and scroll down. As you can see, we can already um, have the preview of our font, which is fantabulous here. And at the moment, I'm just looking for something that is display chunky and of course, you know, a little bit moving and fun. So, and at the opposite side, I'm just going to go ahead and um, click here to find something that is a little bit more like perhaps uh, thin and with serif, like a Dido, some classic stuff. So you were going to have some wild and some classic, nice. just like our tipsy chills. Um, I am playing around with the idea, um, some like logo marks now. Um, and I, I don't like to work with clean lines, so I'm actually going to rough these up after the fact. So I'm just playing around with the ideas of things. Um, but I want to play with the idea of a cone shape, like an ice cream cone. That's like maybe a waffle cone that has like a drink in it with like the Ooh. like olive thing. So that's the so cup. It's like a martini. It's like the top of a martini glass. But then like maybe I'll do one that's a cone that's a drink, and then maybe one that's a martini glass that's a waffle cone. Um, oh, cool. Which could be fun. Sounds cool. Sounds really cool. Um, I think that just to keep it like super different, I'm gonna go especially because mine is chills, so it's like cold yep cool i think i'm gonna go for like a popsicle oh nice and uh i shared with you what i um was gonna think to use as a name when i was starting to brainstorm possible names i don't know if you can see it live say it live oh yeah <laughs> I don't it's, even it's funny did you know that popsicle is a like brand name like it's oh. like Kleenex, like they're they're called like frozen frozen sugar treats or something like something like the name of it is something else. Like popsicle is like a branded name, which I had no idea. I didn't know that. Right. So that that's like that's ex that's a dream for a brand. If you achieve that, if you become the name of a category of your product category, you've done it. Yep. You did it. Oh yeah. They can they they can close and they're still gonna be alive. That's fantastic. That's super cool. I had no idea. We're, we're just dropping knowledge on the chat today. That's what's happening. <laughs> You're here to learn. <laughs> Hi, Brian. Thank you so much for joining in. Arefa. 
olive look like? I have no idea what an olive <laughs> looks like. I'm gonna cut to your screen so I can Google an olive. <laughs> Go ahead, Dobby Stock, and see if you can I know. find some help there. That's okay, so funny. So, um, have you, I focused on the color and now on the typography and you're doing, you're done typography and now you're just doing like a little icons and stuff? Yeah, I kind of am just all over the place. So I think I got like a logo type down. I'm gonna work on like a little bit of a logo then I might explain, like try to do some like badge stuff um, mm -hmm. and play around with that. I'm, yeah, and then t I think tomorrow will end up being some of the photo treatments and stuff. Um, cool. So a little preview of where I wanna go. I'm gonna try to do like collage stuff that is very like punk rock and like toned, maybe like black and white, like punchy but it's gonna be people that are like toasting or like holding drinks or like pouring a shaker, but then like uh, ice cream cones like cut out and like pasted over the glasses. So it looks like they're like toasting ice cream cones. Um, and so I'm That's gonna play so around fun. with that tomorrow in Photoshop, show you guys some uh, compositing ideas, little torn paper, all that fun stuff. Well, tomorrow I'm going to create um, a mock-up. So we're gonna create the actual product, which is our, lolly with fruit and booze and bubbles and we're going to animate it and then we're going to put it into um we're going to create an instagram little video advert so animation in photoshop nice yeah, we're, we're so fun so much fun I'm, and I'm, I'm just saying that we're so much fun just because i usually enjoy watching your stream and i have fun so it's like i still feel like i'm i'm in the audience yes it is fun <laughs> we're to like so much fun Andrew. it's fun <laughs> to stream with chat. another person that like yeah. is also doing things it's like oh you're a streamer too and this is my first time oh doing a doing a battle my very first all right let's see does this look like an olive to you guys um uh, i think maybe it'll catch up in a second oh i think you can yeah it's live um i don't know if it looks like an olive I don't know. We'll keep playing with it. Um, we have about 30 minutes till the challenge, Brianne. Go ahead and submit your submissions over here. Bit.ly slash AI Discord is where you can do that. Floating above my head is the link to get you involved um, to where you can put that in. So just a little bit of a heads up on what I'm doing here. I'm literally experimenting. So uh, what I do usually, I select a bunch of fonts where the characteristic that I like. So something is going to be... Um, nice and chunky and bold and something else is going to be a little bit more flimsy and um, uh, classic so just to make sure that i build on that contrast and what i do is that um i start you know just to have a play and absolutely absolutely is just something that is just to have an idea and i just want to make sure that you know all of you know that no designer starts with a perfect design so yeah those things are ugly I'm just trying to um, have a look and see how the contrast can work. And yep. I'm just simply, I think that by making mistakes and by knowing what you don't want to do, you start to narrow down your choice towards what you want to do. Yep. Arefa says maybe two olives, Andrew. Oh, that's a good idea. I'm going <laughs> to play around too with the idea of it being a martini glass because I feel like that may resonate better. Oh, and also maybe I can like displace the font because it's tipsy. Oh yeah, so do I can some have it like a little weird wonkiness. Maybe, but then I don't know. We'll see. I also I don't want it to be like too. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Again, as I say, this is just experimentation time. This is yep. time to have fun with the fonts. No wrong answers. Here we go. Uh, do you uh, most often when you work? Uh, with other uh, fonts that you find, do you modify them or you use them as they are? I almost always modify them. Um, I'm sorry, font creators. And as a font creator, <laughs> it like feels weird when it's like, oh, that's different. But I always want to like customize them a little bit. Yeah. Okay, looks like we're going somewhere, but I'm still not happy. I'm really liking this. I'm probably gonna make it just more bold, but it's just really like brandy. Maybe, maybe just to keep it more um, easy to read, as I was saying, just like uh, easiness in reading, that relaxed vibe and feeling. I'm just gonna keep it all small caps. Is yep. that a word? Small caps? Yep, small caps small are totally caps? a thing. <laughs> Do they exist? Yes, they are. <laughs> they are real. 
Ooh. I think I found something. Let's see. So shift command O to outline your font. And as you can see, I always create a copy, almost always. <laughs> I just didn't do it while I was saying it. But I always create a copy by pressing option and dragging because I want to make sure that I can go back and um, reuse it if I need to. Or uh, when I started, Andrew, when I was starting designing, I you know, just kind of like got carried away and never really thought about what's going to be afterwards. So I was like, oh my gosh, what font did I use? And I would just literally cry myself because I had no idea what sort of font uh, I was using and I couldn't find it. So I don't know if that ever happens to you. I just kind it of learned does to be a little bit more organized. All the time. Like, I, <laughs> yeah, my design process, as you can see, is a total wreck. Um, but like, there's no wrong way to do stuff. That's what's cool is yes. people probably watch this and they're like, dude, what's this guy doing? And I'm like, I don't know until I know <laughs> like, <laughs> that's the thing. That's is, how it is. Yeah. It's a big question mark. And I, this is, I mean, it happens every time I've been doing this for 10 plus years. And at a certain point I was like, I think this is just the way that it is. Like, I think that this is just the way that I work and that's how it's going to yes. be. And you don't have to be afraid of it. So I think I'm onto something here. Um, that's funny. Somebody asked for the op or for the um, functionality to be able to draw in chat. That's a really good idea that I'm sure would be like the most complicated thing ever to try to make work. Um, <laughs> yes, and also to moderate. Yes, Poor but what, um, what I do do every now and then um, is if you guys want to hop into the Discord, you can post something in there if you have an idea, um, and we can uh, I can hop over and take a look at it. So if you have an idea. Or something that you want to show us, pop it in the Discord, put it in the chat. Um, what software are we using to stream this? Um, I am using uh, Streamlabs OBS. Good old Streamlabs. Tipsy Chills fonts go really well together. Claudia, you're doing it. Woo, woo, woo. Do we like it? Tip, tipsy Chill fonts. <laughs> yeah, I'm loving this one as well. I'm, I'm kind of like a fan now. But what I want to do now is to have a, a background. So what I'm thinking is tipsy, I'm probably going to keep a white or a neutral color just because it's like, it's the bubbles and it's like the general uh, liquid part. Um, well, the chills is going to be the fresh fruit. So perhaps I'm going to jump into my library and start to implement some of the color palettes to see how this brand is doing. Oh, by the way, look what I've done here. Uh, I created an outline and then, uh, sorry, a stroke to my font to make it chubbier because I really want it to be like I totally a do that. nice juicy, like big piece of watermelon or a nice, you know, oh my gosh, I'm just getting so hungry. Right. <laughs> nice piece of papaya. And what I've done is that I started to use the color, but only the feel. Um, took the same color that I selected for my library. So make sure that you don't do the same mistakes. Of course, make a copy. So I'm just going to select both and click an option and drag to make a copy. Uh, but then when I select the font that I've, um, that I created a stroke, what I want to do is to go under object path and make sure that I outline my stroke and then go to my properties and boop, click onto our Pathfinder Unite and it's done. So we once we're gonna go back into our libraries and select the color, boom, we have our, I'm loving this. It's like, you have the full contrast here. You have the chubby, chubbiness of the chunk of fresh fruit. And then you got the little moving tipsy. I think like tipsy needs to be in end writing. Cause it's like, you know, it's just like, whatever. Just, uh, just like, as if you're writing something very fast, you know, yeah. when, you, when you take note, and you are more composed, perhaps you type them and they look neat. Well, usually end writing is a little bit more messy unless you're like, unless you pick a very elegant one, like for example, for weddings and stuff like that. I agree. So I just kind of like this end writing, I guess, because it's a little bit messy. So it's a little bit tipsy, but it's not, it's not too much, you know, all over the place. It's still tipsy with dignity, <laughs> drunk with dignity, yeah. as I say. Not, like not where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh we have God, we so have funny. no dignity left in our uh, logo. Oh, there we go. That's <laughs> what an olive looks like. Okay, I accidentally did it, and I'm like, there it is. That's an olive. Took me a second. Okay, super cool. Um, I'm gonna, gonna do. Um, 
so I'm very neat in organizing my beautiful layer, but then I'm really bad into actually using them. <laughs> so I'm just going to delete and go back and make sure that everything is on the right layer. So for example, once I have this background, I go and open my layer and I can use a little lock. So I'm not locking the entire layer. I'm just look locking this black background so it can give me um, flexibility in selecting just the font. So now I can just go over and select and the background is going to stay still. Yep. And I'm going to try and experiment with a full color palette because this is going to be our flavors. Ooh, looks like it's coming together here. Uh, just kind of like moving on with this one here. And let's see. So we have a mango, pineapple. Now I'm about to play with the width tool, which I think that you did a daily creative challenge on, right? Yes, I'm a fan. Yes, so I'm playing with the width tool because I want this stir stick to like look more stir sticky. <laughs> um, so it's like thick at the top and then thin at the bottom. So Ooh. I'm playing with the, uh, yeah. The width tool. Yep. Cool. That actually is looking very fun. Um, I'm liking how it's looking. So I'm going to play around and now I'm going to make it, um, worse. That's really my zone is I'm not the best <laughs> illustrator. I'm not really great with a lot of things. And so I covered up with texture. Um, and making things look a little bit wonky. So you'll see a little bit of my process of me making it worse until it looks like it's been intentional, like stamped or something. <laughs> That's so much fun. I love like, you know, the discovery. When you when you asked me at the very beginning to introduce myself, you know, I, as much as you can sound like crazy, but the, the reality is that sometimes when I speak with my colleagues that I uh, love and respect, like yourself, Andrew, um, when I look at myself, I'm like, I'm not even a designer. Like, you know, <laughs> I just like, I, I try really hard to make it work. <laughs> so, but then the industry says that I'm a designer. So it's good when other people say it. I don't like to say it. Though. Yes. Marvin, it is not too late to jump into the challenge. You can jump into the challenge whenever you want. There are no rules, literally no rules. Um, I'm going to make these um, olives like a little wonky. People are saying like, oh, it looks like eyes. And if it looks like eyes and you're thinking that, I'm going to make them drunk eyes. Um, <laughs> so they're going to be like, they're going to be like, right uh, right. yeah, exactly. Exact. No, Kate, that is 100% the Hawk method. Make it worse until it's better. One million percent. <laughs> okay, I'm moving into some uh, symbols because I've done some, um, some work in progress here, of course. As you can see, um, I don't know about you, Andrew, actually, I'm going to stop what I'm saying to ask you a question because yes. uh, what, the way that I operate is I start very messy and then I start to you know, clean up afterwards. And sometimes when I see um, the myth of this beautiful, perfect geometric um, representation of logo, a myth that I want to, you know, kind of dismantle is the fact that that's no how things starts. So oh, yeah. that's how designer present their work. Yes. So as you can see, I have this beautiful work in progress, version one, version two, version three. But when I was starting, I was still into my typography. So from the very smaller step to the, to the bigger steps, what I'm really doing here is uh, literally trying to 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 go with with my feelings and what i think it works of course following uh the corporate core but then only afterwards i make clarity so it's always mess and then organizing it mess and organizing it yep um and yes good question from alicia um one campaign is clearly um more feminine one is toward a male demographic who's the target market we have different um target yes. demographics so it is the same brief two completely different target demographics. So I am playing with the idea of a boozy ice cream being very edgy, um, being kind of uh, like punchy and a little uh, in your face. Um, and Cloudy is playing with it being kind of summer fun. Yes. And um, as you can see, um, was Alicia asking the question? Yes. yes Alicia. So um, target market, of course, we're talking about uh, booze alcohol so we're definitely going uh depending on wherever you are from to anything legal age from drinking um but again like it's more trying to understand uh what the brands want to deliver at the beginning i'm just going to jump real quick into the positioning go for it put your screen up um alicia at the beginning we introduced the positioning brand positioning so where i want to uh 
place my brand and my product in the mind of the potential com consumer and uh, same for Andrew so as you can see we have fresh fruity healthy sugary syrupy boozy uh, definitely misspelled a lot of words but the point is that we were trying to understand where we were positioning ourselves so I'm I'm in between the entertaining high quality healthy kind of style and the Andrew is on the edgy um sugary but not too sugary so he says that it's probably going to go a little bit lower depending how it goes but at the moment he's still keeping it a little healthy and straight in terms of um flavor so um we're kind of like specular opposite of course you can uh, have a more feminine and uh, masculine flow in between i don't know if you probably mine um are a little bit more rather than feminine i will use another words are a little bit more uh related to feeling mm -hmm. um and that's again i think that that's where we're demonstrating here andrew is the reason why choose you know between designer because we're both awesome we're all awesome me you Vudubal, um all the amazing peter asus all the amazing p julia all the amazing people they're here the they're our friends swimmer we're all awesome but we're also different in the way we translate um a brief and probably here uh you are going to be talking about yourself in a second but i can talk for myself i'm a very emotional passionate italian <laughs> so either being um a female or male is very based on how i want to feel so as you can see i gave a little bit of a description i'm actually going to jump back into my sunglasses to get back in the mood so here is like uh, what i want to recall with my brand is the warmth of a sunset happy hour kissed by the sun surrounded by your loved ones and the friends of your lifetime warm as the sun and as a hug with oriental spices and herbs and fresh fruits so again juicy vibrant cool fun experience um, this is a little bit of what my my um, brand is trying to focus and that's why we got such a high saturated strong palette and we got bold color uh, but at the same time also um, the tipsy is hugging the chills so we have a little bit of the warmth there as well even if it says yep. chills yeah and i definitely um have stopped using male and female descriptors just because i don't think it like captures exactly what you're trying to talk about um especially because everything is so like different and diverse right now um like talking about something traditionally male oh i punched my mic again oh man <laughs> gone is I know, it time right? to go <laughs> yeah like the idea of like something being like oh it's like catering toward like a more male style like i have blue and gold fingernails like is that the style so it's helpful to do um like That's you said true. like emotions and feelings and thoughts um for that kind of stuff um so if I you uh agree. tuned out for just a second well you did because i turned my screen off um i started working and i put um some ice cubes in here which i think are interesting to kind of give the idea that like it's a cocktail. Um, so I'm playing around with that and then I'm gonna keep Ooh, exploring. yeah, giving that freshness. Right, it's kind of so a So just real quick, um, two things before I show what I'm doing here with the um, rotation tool. I think it's called rotation. Let me just double check the rotate tool. Um, yes, and you know, it's not only uh, female and male, something that probably is good to specify, especially when you work with your client. Even if you say something like, you know, posh or cheap or, you know, that depends on what people like. I found myself, and I don't know if that ever happened to you, but I found myself having to direct a photo shoot. And um, I'm not going to say it was, but um, while I was directing the photo shoot, the person that I was working with told me that she wanted to look very elegant. And that's why mood boards are so important when you're developing an idea. Because elegant for me can be completely different than what elegant is for any other person. Uh, because that depends what we grow up, what sort of culture we're being exposed to, which country do we live on. Um, so I think that the reason why mood boards are so great and you need a very rich description and that's why even like here when i say warm i really break it down to how does it feel what kind of warmness i'm talking about you know because it's like i'm sweating am i sick and tired of how hot it is and i just want to jump in a pool warm or just like a soft warm just like you know and and that's the same male female uh it can be an angry female which looks more like a male and a happy male which can have more feminine connotations so 
really use then mood boards in order to um, break down what you're doing. Yep. And in terms of tools, just real quick, Andrew, sorry, I'm just going to uh, show you what I was doing here. So I'm try trying to build a little lemon. All I've done is go into my uh, polygonal tool, polygon tool and click and drag and use my up and down arrow in order to uh, switch between multiple uh, points up to a triangle. And once I'm done, all I have to do is click on A to select my direct selection tool, go ahead into our little little corners and drag in to uh, transform the pointy uh, corner into a round one. And then of course I resize that and place that right there. And now to rotate it around my circle, I'm gonna go and use my rotate tool here in our toolbar on the left. And by pressing option, I'm gonna place my little um, selection here for the rotation. So the center of the rotation uh, in the middle of the circle. And I'm gonna start to uh, move my little uh, triangle for the degree that I want. And I'm gonna click on preview to make sure that I see what I'm doing here, perhaps. Um, 260 probably should do before and then i'm gonna press on copy to make sure that i create another copy and now to create more all i have to do is press command d and boom it's creating more yep. now it looks like they were a little bit uh overlapping so i'm just gonna go back and once i create again option and click to have the panel option i'm just gonna make it a little bit less oops sorry so a little bit of a wider angle so it moves less um, question, are those details really good for small sizes for me? Um, no. <laughs> no is the answer. They are not. Um, zero percent. Uh, but I'm trying to blur them out so that they'll um, some, some of the details will start to either bleed together or have enough trapping space. And that's actually what I'm doing right now is I made another copy um, because I want to play with these ice cubes and olives being in different uh, placements. I didn't like the way that they were overlapping. So... I'm gonna keep playing with that. Actually, I'm starting to like this mark a little bit now. I hated it and I'm starting to feel like, yeah, look at everything. Andrew, I don't know if you ever used that, but I discovered this tool before. Under rotate, there is a reflect tool. So yes. I usually used to go and right click um, on the shape and because you can access that transformation here and reflect from there. But if you click and hold under rotate, there is the reflect tool. So by pressing return, the reflect panel is gonna come and ask if you want a vertical, horizontal, and all you have to do in this case, I have to press copy because I want to create a copy of um, the elements that I've selected here. Yes. Super cool. It's cool Super to cool. like watch these streams and learn tools and be like, oh my gosh, how did I not know that this tool existed? Yes. Yes. Let us know in the chat if you have learned anything that you never used before today that either me and Andrew are doing. Oh yeah, let us know that. So today's stream is a little bit more uh, focused on the overall look rather than the tool themselves, I think. Yeah, it's fun. Just the diversity of these streams, that it can be one thing, it can be another thing. And like tomorrow, we'll probably be in Photoshop and it'll be like, cool, what are you guys doing in Photoshop? And yes. we'll walk you through that. We're here to teach you and help you learn. Um, and hopefully you guys are learning things. Let's see here. I'm trying to get a lemon together. Michelle is giving me a uh, type in 364. So see, I'm actually learning something. Um, I'm going to try what you say just because I want to show it because it's actually very, very cool. So Michelle gave a very good advice uh, because of course the circles is uh, 360. I'm going to delete the other one and make a copy. Very clever. Thank you so much, Michelle. Uh, so what I've done, I actually ended up creating uh, a rotation of one. Uh, so 360 split by four because um, Illustrator does math for you. So that's where you can get, um, I'm going to press command D and here we go. So it looks much neater. Uh, Michelle, thank you so much. I'm going to keep them both. I'm going to press Command G to group them and then select them both and go to my properties panel to make sure that they are aligned. Here they are. Um, a question from uh, Jiratima, I think, who is in the chat often. Uh, do I always begin in black and white and then add color later on? I always just want to work in black and white is the answer to that question. I don't ever want to add color to things. Um, 
I don't like color. <laughs> I just I want everything Any to be black and white. Any color at all? No. If I if I can sell a client on something being black and white, it's going to be black and white. Um, that's true. So yeah, that's that's really my zone is working in just black and white. I might add color later. We'll see. Um, but I want this one to yeah not be in color. And by the way, what's your family color in the chat? I want to know. I'm curious. My oh, favorite yeah. color. I, I I agree with you with you, Andrew. I'm a big fan of black and white. I think that the most classical work is delivered in black and white. Like I really think that black and white rocks, um, and it is really also flexible. But at the same time, um, I do have a favorite color, which is um, a tile, the color of the sea, because mm. as I said, I'm a little fish. Um, and um, I want to know in the chat, what's your favorite color? And by the way, I'm so obsessed with tile that my bedroom walls are all tile as well. Nice. Um, and also, Michelle, thank you so much for your advice. The reason why I was trying to like um, make a repetition so it's somewhat consistent, but at the same time uh, is, is a, a little bit more imperfect is because when I draw anything that is natural, um, I don't want it to look like machine made. So I don't want it to look like too perfect yep. because if you open your lemon if you open your oranges i'm sure that you're gonna have like maybe a little baby orange inside it makes all the other little sides all move around so and that's what i'm doing right now is i'm making mine super wonky yes the beauty of imperfection there we go so i'm trying to capture a little bit of that texture in there and i think we got it i think that's a fun mark um i'm gonna stick with it it's not great but it's good <laughs> we like it. We uh, like it. yeah i like it it's fun and then i'm gonna put it next to our type because it's almost time for um challenge reviews okay so before we jump i just want to show something real quick which is the amazing appearance panel yes um one thing that i love about the appearance panel is that you can add as many appearance as you want especially if you're working with stroke so in this case, I can add a stroke, which is going to be outside, and I can give it the color uh, from my palette. Actually, let me bring my palette into my swatches so we can use it here. So I'm going to go into window, swatches, bring my swatches out, and then I'm going to go ahead and select my lovely color and click on my group, new color group, uh, color tipsy, chills. And make sure that we're going to bring the color from the selected artwork and press OK, and here they are. So when I go back into my appearance panel, in this case, I was working on the stroke. When I click here on the color on the stroke, I can choose it from my lovely little swatches. And what if I want to add for another stroke? So all you have to do is click here. I'm going to zoom in at the very bottom of the appearance panel where it says uh, at a very like empty, very uh, left little square. Uh, where it says add a new stroke all you have to do is click and you can see that under the appearance you will have a new stroke uh, here which is i believe this one which is exactly the same but in this case i'm going to make it way bigger and also you can play with the opacity you can play with so many amazing things here there is so much so. magic to be had yes yes and of course you're going to see the difference in a second when i'm going to change the color here so now you can see this one is way more overwhelming than the other. Okay, so I kind of uh, pressed a thousand <laughs> point stroke <laughs> instead of 23. <laughs> I was just looking for 23. That's all I was looking for. And also you can click and drag in order to uh, move your stroke around. All right. Um, so we are going to hop into challenges. I'm actually going to yes. show... Uh, off where I landed for day one, uh, which was our first day. So um, let's see. Let's go ahead and just move this over here. Oh, I need to do the screens. Hold on one second. Um, let's see here. How do I do back to your screen? And two up. There we go. Uh, cool. So we're about to do some um, some daily creative challenges, but we're going to show off where we went today, um, and then we'll be continuing this on tomorrow. 
Um, so here is where I landed for the day. Little logo type, little icon, um, playing around with some drinks um, and uh, waffle cones kind of going together, which is kind of fun. Um, and Claudia, where did we end for you today? So I think I'm kind of in love with this one here. I think it really embraced uh, what I was trying to achieve in terms of giving the hug, feeling the togetherness, and also have a little bit of this wonky, quick, relaxed um, handwriting that is tipsy. So, you know, I don't care. I'm just gonna like go fast and just leave it right there. But at the same time, we got the chills, chunky, fresh fruits there uh, sticking out for our um, brand. And real quick again, I'm working on my uh, brand mood board. If for those of you who do not have, um, you, you just tuned in perhaps, you can find exactly the same mood board, both the InDesign where we started here today so we started from our beautiful cat chilling on the pool and the color um, and also this brand development mood board you can find them both on my website iamclady.com slash resources so for today i think we landed here on these tipsy chills fruity vibes super fun um and then uh so tomorrow i will be exploring more of our taglines doing some uh badges and stuff pretty pretty pleased with an olive on top um, lick, lick, uh, oh, this should be lick, lick, booze, lick, lick, booze, um, like click, click, boom, uh, salt sprinkle, chocolate sauce, shake it, make it a double. So we're going to play around with some of those tomorrow, build out a little more of the campaign of the brand system. Um, I think you see the logo and the type and you're like, okay, but once you see it in a system, I think it will, um, yes. turn into something completely new. So let's hop over Claudia into, um, discord. discord. Oh, I've never done this where like you can see the same discord as me it's always been like the most weird awkward thing to do <laughs> um so i'm gonna hop over into discord we are in the challenge tab i'm gonna go ahead yes. and put this full screen for us um and do we just want to start at the bottom and kind of work our way up also Ooh. pay no attention to Ooh. the insane amount of notifications i have in the corner um i don't know what's happening maybe something's on fire but we're live now so you have all of our attention um cool so that looks fantastic by the way i just had a quick scroll down and it looks beautiful yeah, you guys are like killing it okay so let's start um oh actually let's do this let's look at what the challenge is for today here's me looking up what an olive looks like um so the challenge for today was <laughs> gradient shapes design colorful shapes oh i didn't show you i'm sorry there we go design colorful shapes using the gradient tool so it was shapes and gradients so um we are going to hop into the discord um, and figure out um, what it looks like. So, I just need um, some water because I would drink too much coffee. <laughs> at the same oh, yes. Time. Uh, yes. So I'm just trying to stay alive. Oh, I'll go to the <laughs> schedule. Let's do that. So, the schedule <laughs> coming up um, right now, it's branding with uh, me and Claudie. Um, next up, we have our friend Peter Del Tondo, who I know is probably waiting um, in the waiting room. So, we're going to have a secret emoji. If you stay tuned, we'll have a secret emoji to put for Peter when he goes live, which will be very fun. Then we have our friend Kyle T. Webster, and at three o'clock, I will be back, and I will be in a Chun-Li costume from Street Fighter going head-to-head -head with Voodoo Val. That's not a metaphor. I actually will be wearing a Chun-Li costume. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes. Um, oh, the, the Black Swan is out. Um, all right. Let's yes. hop. Yes. So uh, we, we, it was asking to review the challenges. So um, yeah, I'm just here with the Black Swan. I'm just listening to his advices and feedback. So got a three people feedback. I mean, two people and an inflatable swan. <laughs> yes. Also, wow. There are a thousand people here in chat. Hello. <laughs> um, that's a lot of people. So it's very exciting to see you all here. Um, usually it's a little bit less than that during the challenges, but maybe the- And the, they're, they're all friends of the swan. The I swan think, brought yeah, their friends. That's true, yeah. <laughs> they're neither of our friends, they're just the swan friends. Yes. Um, cool, so let's hop in and let's talk about this one by Dominica, um, the pop the bubble example here. Um, do you have any thoughts? Wow. So just one second, because people are like, sending so many so mine is just updated and there are two new more uh work so oh let let's me go that let's scroll down then and see the one. Oh, so there the last one here. that i see is uh brie yes let's do brie beautiful brie looks fantabulous so i'm gonna take my glasses out so i can actually see the color i've been silly so um i absolutely love it i love the simplicity of it i love that you use um monotone palette so even if we're going from an orange hue to a pink hue, you, you're still keeping it within the same uh, color tone. And also you can see all the little detail on the corner. Um, I love the balance of the corner and also the gradient repeated on the edge. Um, 
probably the only, only, only tip that I have is when you have the three lines, I don't know if you can see it at the left of the poster. Yep. It looks like the margin there is off. I'm a big margin freak. Um, so unless there is a specific meaning or a specific need, for those to be out of margin try to push it in a little bit more or maybe make them vertical so it looks like you're actually framing um your central artwork what do you think Andrew? yeah i agree i love this like cool like brutalist kind of humanist type with the outlines kind of vibe um your gradient's really nice i like that it's wonky and it's not like a perfect circle i actually really like that um i can't read what it's it likes like but i don't care problem. yeah I don't really care about what it says. Um, I just like the vibe of it. So I think that's really cool. Um, I agree your margins on the left edge on the top and bottom as well are not bleeding all the way off. I just bleed those all the way off. Why not? Um, and I'd like to see something in the top middle and bottom middle as well. If you're framing the whole thing out, um, I would want more of some frame stuff. Okay, so I'm reviewing the other ones as well, and it looks like they all have it. So it might be part of the brief. Oh, so brief, it might be part of the brief. Spot on. You got it's it. Part of the brief. You nailed You've it. Done it. You nailed You've it. Done it. I know. I guess then that is. Did we just critique Julia? <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't know the brief. And Love also, as I yes. said, depends depends on what you need to do. That's so, true. Very true. Um, if right. your creative director, aka Julia, say that that's cool. We are needed. We need it. It's something yep. that is needed. Um, Sandy is up next. And Sandy, Ooh. I remember you from my challenges when we went to space. Um, you had some really great space pieces. And I recognize that little alien, at least I think it's you. So it's good to see you mm -hmm. back for the challenges. Um, <laughs> any thoughts here? I love the contrast. So oranges and reds and blues are usually a, something that I um, have used a lot in the past, especially just giving the contrast. Uh, I think that they're complementary. Don't quote me on names because I'm so bad. Are they? Because they're seat opposite. Yes. They, they're seat opposite. I believe that's what I don't know either. I just like opposite the cool. and the color wheel. Yeah. <laughs> so they sit opposite to each other, and therefore they complement each other. Oh, complementary. Yes. Probably. <laughs> so yeah, very well done with the color selection. Um, I'm a little bit confused with the typeface simply because it looks like it's uh, as strong as the shapes. So at the moment I'm having like, oh, look at me. And that's the type. And then the shapes say, look at me. So I'm like, uh, where do I have to look? And so a slight, a little um, competition between the elements. Um, so perhaps either use the gradient on the type. So you kind of like blend them a little bit together just to build a little bit more of hierarchy. Um, so the elements uh, work together. What do you think? I totally agree. Um, I think the contrast is really nice, really fun. Um, I don't need the top shape that you have. You have like a top gradient going on there. I don't need that. Um, I could just do the two that you have in the background. Um, and then I do think the type could be a sans serif. There's a lot going on. Um, and so to simplify it, I think could be um, a little easier and maybe a little bit um, more refined. Or make the shape like more to turn down the opacity on the shapes. So, yep. you know, if, if perhaps the, you love the type and you want to keep them, Turn your opacity a little bit uh, lower on the on the shape. So um, remember, hierarchy design principles are always on the backbone on any project, and hierarchy is a key one just because allows our eyes to understand what we're looking at. And if you have two conflicting pieces that in this case require the same amount of attention, so they have the same size, they are both the same, they are bright the same. My eyes is like, oh my god, what do I have to do? I'm confused. And then I turn somewhere else, which yep. what you really want is to keep the attention. So love the color, love the contrast, just work on the hierarchy a little bit yep. and you'll and be done. I think a lot of the problem too is the sharp edges you have on the shape in the back are competing with the sharp edges on the serif. So I would round out the edges on the back shapes and then you can maybe keep that serif there. Um, and by the way, I'm so sorry because you're having like two, <laughs> two, two, the, two, the daily creative challenge uh, people giving you feedback. So you're going to have true. it. <laughs> so yeah, you're, you're getting like mega feedback. Um, speaking about mega feedback, I'll just plug this right now. 
Um, if you guys want to win a free year of Creative Cloud, what a giveaway. Um, Nick Longo and I are doing um, a Creative Cloud year subscription giveaway um, in partnership with Adobe Awards. Um, we host a show every Friday at 1 p.m. called Office Hours. And if you want to be considered, we want to see your portfolios. We want you to record a video of pitching us a project, tweet us your portfolios, show us your favorite work, and be sure to use the hashtag Adobe Office Hours. So Adobe Office Hours um, is what you would use and post. You can tweet it, post on Instagram, post on Behance. Um, and on Friday at 1 p.m., we will be picking that winner um, and giving away a free year of Creative Cloud, right? That's a great prize. <laughs> Uh, I'm so sorry I was giggling on the side simply because I'm le um, I'm leaking I'm looking at the chat I'm still stuck with my lollipop I'm uh, looking at the chat um, there were Arefa says Claudia how many products do you have around and I was actually laughing because I had a look around my desk and I have like robot toys cat toys yep. I have a skeleton I have like rubber rainbow things oh, I'm the same way and like I have some Adobe notes yep. I have so many things Got like my makeup brushes call for my trip from mexico <laughs> so many so many useless yes things. tiny hands <laughs> and tiny let me hands. let me see if i can jump one second out of out of screen real quick oh please do um because i want to introduce you to oh. my uh, friend i don't know if you can see it real quick but he's always been on my desk since i started he like helps me to make sure that my work goes oh. okay so little cutie yes yeah. uh adobe office hours plural um in there booty valve if you can drop um maybe a link to uh, my tweet um or wherever you want um actually you can link to adobe awards as well they'll be posting it um i am dropping a link to you val um so that you can post uh to that and yes hashtag adobe office hours for all you friends um thanks all right let's hop back in to Fantastic. reviews I, yes. Like, it's funny when we're with another host because we're like, everyone is bad at staying on task, like across the board. <laughs> yeah, oh, we're doing it the same way. So right. um, we got this one here. Yes, here we go. Review, so, let's, review. Let's so we got Dominica. At Dominica, yeah. Fantastic. Um, really beautiful. I love the gradient there. It looks very, very juicy. You know how much I like it juicy. Yep. It's beautiful. So, and also... You've done such a good job that it almost looked like it's metallic. Yes. I really dig this. Yep. I love the freeform gradient. So we did a lesson on freeform gradients during my challenges last week, and I described them as water balloons. Like think about dropping water balloons from above Ooh. filled with colors, right? And when it hits, it explodes into that color and then fades into other ones. Um, so you did a great job at like picking your points. The only thing that I'm going to get you on is all of your smaller bubbles. These top three are the same. Um, if you're going to do it, you need to play with those freeform gradients because the other ones are different, but I think I see four or five that are the same. So if you're going to do that, um, just mix them up and it's just a matter of moving them a couple of pixels here and there. So they look unique. And also I had a little vision because sometimes up, I don't know if it ever happens to you, but sometimes like I look at a couple of things and then something happened to my eyes. So I've looked at the little three stripes that keep like coming to my eyes because again, are off margin. So they stick out, but I was thinking, what if the bubble typography is made of stripes? Yes. I think that would like, because at the moment it's very solid. And uh, it, again, like in this case, hierarchy is like, boom, white, super contrast, super big. So it's like very, very big. But maybe if we dull it down, but like using the stripe that you have on the side, create a pattern and or maybe just mask it. So you can just create a little mask and on bubble and bubble is on stripes. So it's like, bubble is supposed to be round but actually use stripes i don't know just yes. went away with my vision but. i agree and i don't know if i need the little stripies at the top um i don't i, mean, yeah. I don't need them I, they could be interesting if you incorporate it more i think i agree yep All i right, think let's... it takes away from the beautiful gradient yep. you've done on the bubbles let's go up to um chocolita Oh, Chocolita. Too. Do you recognize yes. her? Yes, she does a lot of the challenges, yes. I guess. Um, I believe her name is Michelle. I think she's also in the chat. Hi, Michelle. Um, I hope it's her name, so make sure that I say the right things. And um, I, she does all the challenges. She's very, very hardworking. She's done all my challenges as well. Um, and let's see what's going on here. First of all, I love the color palette. Um, I love the fact that you have 
a beautiful, beautiful gradient and then a gray background. Yes, that's Michelle in the chat. Yes, hello. I know you. <laughs> Chocolita is Michelle. We have wonderful conversation also on Instagram. So Michelle, I love the color contrast. I love the fact that you have neutral colors, white, and gray, very relaxing, and then all the mood brought in from the uh, gradient. I'm not sure about the typeface repetition. I usually don't go more than like two styles. And here I can see like pretty much all the family hanging out of the font. I never go like over five. I think this one, this one says that it has three. What do you think, Henry? I'm a fan of using like nine typefaces on things. So I <laughs> don't attain to the two typeface rule. I think if you can balance them, literally throw as many as you can um, on there um, if you can make them work but make sure that they are working and make sure they are communicating well um, I do think that it's it looks a little wonky here I'm not actually mad about it I am mad about the U being cut out um, that's mm -hmm. not working for me so much um, and then I'd want to see more like push more type on this um, if you're going to do it to where it's like wonky and wiggly and kind of everywhere like throw an extra yeah. like 10 on here um, yeah. Just make it totally crazy. Go big or go home. Yes. <laughs> and that's something that I, you know, that's something that I usually do in my design and when I make choices. Um, if you want to use like a contrast, then use a contrast. Don't use kind of a contrast. Yep. If you want to use a ton of type, use a ton of type. Don't be shy with your choices. Make sure they, and perhaps like you can either like put in in an in a order if you're trying to put in an order from the thinnest to the thickest then put in an order with the same margin or if you're mixing them up mix up the weight as well yes. just be consistent with whatever choice you make go for it i absolutely agree if you're gonna make a move like move um <laughs> yes if you're gonna make a move make a move um peter yes. is in chat peter is up next um so make sure you stay tuned for his um peter and i are wearing the same shirt is what we have learned um Aww. so we are always Hi, twinsies. we do this all the time um 50 of the time we get together he said yes we're wearing the same clothes it happens that's so fun um but yeah stay tuned next for peter um our secret emoji is going to be um i let peter pick it so let me double check um ooh, this is a good one um actually i don't know if this is uh going to be available in this chat let's see what happens no, male genie is not available. So um, we're gonna have our <laughs> we're gonna have our secret emoji for Peter B. A monkey. Pick any of the monkey emojis um, and do that. Let's look at Tunks since he's Tunk. I still yes. can't pronounce it. Let's look at that since he's in chat. I've seen him, um, and then Tunk. we'll wrap up our stream. Tunk is on brand. Everything that he's like he does because I can recognize it also from Instagram. Yep. Um, Tunk is orange. When I when I think of his name, all I see is orange and gray, which is fantastic because you are building your brand. Yep. And um, again here, since you are staying on brand, maybe like make sure that you chuck a little bit of yellow instead of white. So you really because I don't know if you do that, um, Andrew, but when I look at my design, sometimes I squint. I think you say squint in English like mm -hmm. I close my eyes a little bit yep, squint, and yeah. I try, I try to, um, you know, have, have a perception of what I see just by like having just like a vague idea. And what it pops out here at the moment is also white, orange and, um, gray. So if you want to stay on brand, which looks like what you're doing, maybe just throw a yellow instead of a white. Uh, but otherwise beside that, I love that you have all the, uh, topography going beautifully vertical around the poster and you just have one stripe which sort of again use the same color if you're using orange again uh maybe since it's next to illustrator use the same orange i yep. don't know but uh, overall yep. i like i love the contrast of the gray and orange i think it looks well yep i'd love to see some freeform gradients here too maybe a version that is a little more um like kind of splotchy with some of the colors i think could be interesting so i play around with that but overall i think it's really nice um looks like you have a little noise on there which i love in the background gives it some texture um i love that stuff um absolutely so yeah um if you want to join in again you can go to behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator to get involved um and get uh your um daily creative challenges posted claudia if you'd like to point with me above us 
bit.ly slash AI Discord. This is always my favorite thing to do. It makes me so happy. Um, so yes, go there. Um, and that is a great place uh, to, to um, get involved. You can also stick around next for Peter Del Tondo. Um, we looked at a bunch of my fonts today um, as I was working, so we'll do this. Um, stay for the giveaway. If you stay for Peter's, um, once he starts the stream, drop in some monkey emojis for him, and I'll pick one of the people in chat, and I will give them one of my fonts. Um, you can check it out. Pick any of my fonts. I'm going to participate uh, as well. Yes, what do you want to give away? <laughs> oh, you're, you want the fonts. Yeah, but I oh. want the font. I'm okay, I'll, font. I'll send you the fonts. I'll just send you the fonts. You're an instant winner, Claudie. <laughs> You're an instant winner for being here with me. Um, and then we have Kyle T. Webster coming up after that. And I'll be back at 3 o'clock with Voodoo Val. Um, I will be dressed like Chun-Li. We will be doing a Street Fighter video game head-to-head -head design off, which will be totally crazy um, and really fun. Um, one last question before we go away from chat. Um, again, we'll be back the same time tomorrow finishing our projects. But a question from chat that I think will be helpful is, how do you get through the um, budget phase of working with a client? Uh, and think about that, Claudia, and I'll answer real quick. Um, so my answer is just go through it. Um, don't be afraid of talking money. Um, don't be afraid of quoting numbers. If it doesn't work for them, it doesn't work for them. Um, it's only going to hurt you if you're nervous or you don't bring up the numbers or don't push through. Um, it's better to work through that than to just gloss over it um, at the front end. And so if you're working with a client and they're like, hey, we want like a, a full rebrand or something, I'll immediately be like, cool. So you're looking in the range of 30 to 50,000 for the project. Um, if we need to scale that back, we can maybe do smaller projects. We can space it out over different months um, and be yes. ready and have your quotes. And if it's not going to work from them, um, set up timelines. It's like, cool, you can pay 10 here, 10 there, 10 here, 10 there. Um, or maybe it's over this amount of time as you have the income, you can pay it to me over that time. So then you have guaranteed, uh, guaranteed income. Uh, but yeah, Claudia, how do you manage that? I'm going to jump in real quick saying, take care of your future self, because you're going to be the one in the poop when you're going to have to do the work and you're not going to get any money. Yep. So take care of your future self and think about how stressed you're going to be and how much time of your life you're going to give to your clients. So yep. they better give you the money. Yeah. And it's all confidence. <laughs> I was, I was doing branding projects for like nothing over a thousand dollars and eventually worked up the confidence to quote somebody 30 grand and be like, yep, that's it. Like that's how it's going to be. Um, and so that's what you need to do. It's, it's a lot of confidence, um, which is crazy. Yes. Um, and nerve -wracking. And, and which also builds up with, with, with your experience. Yes, exactly. So if right now you're unsure, hang in there, keep working. And trust me, what the time that you're going to be doing the work, you feel that you've not been paying enough. That's going to build your confidence because next time you're going to be like, no, yep. I want my money because I deserve it because I'm going to work. Absolutely. And check out so. a book. This is the last thing I'm going to say because we do have to cut. We're going to yes, cut off. Um, go to um, the Hoodspa Design has a great book called Freelance and Business and Stuff. Look it up, buy it, read it. It is insanely helpful. Go do that. Um, all right. Well, thanks for we'll hanging see out, each other everybody. tomorrow. Yes, we'll see you tomorrow. Stay tuned for Peter again. Giveaway. Uh, Thank free you, fonts. Andrew. Yes, drop in some um, uh, monkey emojis for Peter in about five minutes. Hang tight, and we'll <laughs> see you guys later. Bye. Bye.